great joy to sing that hymn, a beautiful hymn, with the author standing in the stained glass window looking at you. What a joy that is. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Together we say our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and, and from whom the secrets are hidden, hidden. cleanse the, the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through, through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. And the second is this, to love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Our gospel reading appears in our liturgy here today. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sin, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. So together, let us confess our sin in penitence and in faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our, our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen.
pray today's collect, our collect for today for Trinity Sunday. Let us pray together with the whole church. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us your servant's grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore be defended from all our adversities. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 So we're seated for our reading. <coughs> the lesson is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6. Isaiah's vision of the Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne. came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can you enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen. Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? 
No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpents in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Holy Christ. And so you may speak and lend one God, his Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Today we should be excited, excited about coming to church. Why? Because today we commend God's love to the world. The central claim of Christianity is that God is love. A Jew, a Muslim, would say that God loves. God loves this world. And that is true for Christians. Yes, that is true. But the Christian is making a radical claim. God is love. God is love. But ultimately, love finds itself in God. It finds its home in God. God is love. Love is not just something that God does. But it is who God is. God's very essence, God's very being, God's existence is love. When we say God is love, we are speaking of an interplay in God. By definition, there must be a lover and a dearest. Yes, God loves the world, but importantly, primordially, God is loving in his nature itself. God is love because there is a play within, the God, within one God, lover for love, and the love that they share. And the apostles are making a very exciting claim that the one God of Israel, hear O Israel, the Lord your God is one, has revealed himself as beloved, lover and love. Jesus is sent into this world as God and that's the revelation that they're dealing with. God has sent himself into this world. And so there is a sent and there is a sender in God. And Jesus is coming to this world to interact with man, with you, with me. God loves the world, yes. But we become born again as Christians when we affirm that God is sent into this world, that we may know his abundant living, because we seek God. That's the point. We seek God, and therefore we are entered into this abundant living in God. The offer of rebirth is overlooked by Nicodemus, but it comes through this new revelation. God is with you, sent into the world. Not to condemn the world, but my love for you grants that abundant life that you may now, as a person, live fully alive in me. And there's our rebirth. Christians become fully alive in God because God is sent into this world. Jesus' self-disclosure 
is misunderstood by Nicodemus. And we, too, misunderstand if we think God's love is some sort of influence upon our lives. John, our Gospel writer, knows that the Trinity, God's love, is much more than just an influence on our lives. It's a practical reality. And that's another revelation for us to consider here and now. Chapter 17 of John says, I have made you known to them, and will continue to make you known, in order that the love you have for me may be in them, and that I myself may be in them. God's promise, God's promise is that you won't be left to find the energy to love God. Rather, that love is situated in you. And he promises to give you infinite assistance to help you. If you embark upon loving God in Jesus, God's promise is that he will grant you that infinite assistance to help you to do that because the love of God is within you. And that makes no sense. It makes no sense unless we understand that all the activity of God's love is directed towards us in order that we may live in his life more abundantly and that we might come to know and to love, to love He who is our Maker, who is our Lord, our Lover and our Keeper. God has given you infinite energy to love Him. And that's a practicality that all Christians can plug themselves into. Julian of Norwich said, The Trinity is God, and God is the Trinity. The Trinity is our Maker and Keeper. The Trinity is our everlasting love. It is our joy and our bliss through our Lord Jesus Christ. God is Stay together, let us stand together as we declare our faith in one common creed, in the one God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord in Jesus Christ. The only Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, God light from light, light, true God from true God, God begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have an end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from.
the Father and the Son. Be with the Father and the Son is worship and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. Amen. So let us pray to the one God who is Father, Son and Holy Spirit. So let us pray. Together here at St Pancras Church and also at home online, let us pray to the Father through the Son and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, may the Church reflect your community and unity. May there be godly harmony, shared ministry, mutual support and encouragement in the faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. Heavenly Father, may the world leaders seek not personal power, but the public good. May conflicts be faced honestly, and our needs recognised and strive towards to be met. May all our communities